Wonderful people of the universe, my name is JoeyX213, welcome to the video, I am here all by myself to give you guys an in-depth overview of my OBS settings and some tips and tricks to help you lower your CPU usage so that your OBS studio does not overload every time you try to stream or record. Here we go! Alright, so what you want to do is go over to settings under controls and it will open up this big old tab right here. It'll start you off in general, so that's where you want to start. There's not much to change in here unless you want certain things to change. The only thing I would personally change is the theme because default just looks awful, but I keep it at Acri. It is just better to me. There's tons of other stuff in here that you can change as well if you want to. That all depends on your own personal preference. Going into stream now, you want to click on streaming services. I would suggest keeping it streaming services because it's just much more convenient to find what you need. So service, I do YouTube. If you do Twitch or something else, then click on that. Like say that you do Facebook Live, click there. If it does not show up your streaming service on here, click show all services and you might have better luck there. Server, I use primary YouTube ingest server and then you put your stream key right there. You will be able to find your stream key at the live dashboard of your YouTube. Going into the output tab now. You want to click on output mode and not have it at simple. You want to click on advanced so that you can actually have a lot more settings to change. Audio track, I only have one audio track at the moment. If you want more than that, you can select it accordingly. I only need one, so I leave it at one. Encoder, I have it at X264. That basically means that I am using an encoder that is more CPU heavy instead of graphics card heavy. It puts out better, qu it puts out better quality than the GPU does, the graphics card. So if your CPU can handle it, then I would suggest using X264. Rescale output, if your computer can handle it, I'd suggest turning it up to 1920 by 1080, especially for recordings. Streaming, it might be a bit harder to get up there. And if not, then I would suggest turning it down to 1280 by 720. Or if you can get it even higher, then try to go for 1440 or something higher. Rate control, the default is CBR. So I would suggest leaving it that it is the best one out of the four options. Bitrate for 1920 by 1080p is between 4,500 and 9,000, so I leave it at around 6,000. The more bitrate you have, the more intensive it's going to be on your computer, so watch out. This is just something that you have to test based upon your PC. CPU usage, I would suggest testing with this. You should probably start somewhere around super fast or very fast and then work your way down because the slower it is, the more pressure it's going to be putting on your computer and your CPU especially. Profile, tune, you can leave that at none. This guy you can leave alone. Recording, type, I leave it standard unless you need a custom output. I do not, so I leave it at standard. Recording path, you can put that again wherever you want. Generate file name without space, I just leave that unchecked, it doesn't really matter. Recording format, MP4, that is the main one that I use. Encoder, you just use a stream encoder, which is X264 for me, unless you use the graphics card one. Rescale output, I once again recommend starting at 1280 by 720 unless you have a really good PC. Recording is definitely better at 1080p. Audio, nothing to change unless you have multiple tracks here. Replay buffer, nothing to change here. Let's go to the audio tab on the left. Nothing to change here either except for sample rate. There's two things right here. You got 44.1 and 48. Now, I cannot specifically tell you which one to choose. Mine runs at 48, but that's just my specific microphone. But I can tell you how to check, okay? So you want to go to start over here. Click on that. Type in sound, all right? Go to recording, and it'll show you a bunch of microphones that you may have depending upon your computer. Scroll down or up to whatever microphone you're using. I am using my Blue Yeti microphone at the moment. So I'm going to click on that one. You can either double click or just click it once and click on properties. You want to go over to advance and then it will show you this guy right here at default format. The default should probably be at DVD quality. So you want to check that. And if it says 48,000 hertz, then you want to have the 48 over here. But if it's at 44,100, then you want to choose the other one. All right. I would recommend DVD quality though. And video. Base canvas resolution and output scaled resolution, I have them both at 1920 by 1080p. If you are streaming, I would suggest possibly lowering it a little bit to reduce some lag, but if your computer can handle it, I would definitely recommend. Downscale filter, I have mine at Bicubic, it's right in the middle. Common frames per second values, 
I have mine at 60. If yours can't handle that, I would suggest lowering it to 30 or even 29.97, but definitely not lower than that and probably not one of these two unless your computer can handle one of those and not 60. Okay, hotkeys. This is where you can get creative and do whatever you want. I just have it for streaming and recording, which is a plus sign and an asterisk, but you can do a lot of stuff in here depending upon what you have. So good luck with that. Go nuts. Advanced, once again, I have not changed anything except for something down here. Stream delay, I have it at one second because it is definitely the best for real-time interaction. And it should be the default there. You can't go any lower, but you can go higher. The higher you go, the more memory usage it will need, though. So be careful. That's all we, I've got for there. Once you're done, click Apply and OK. You see the CPU here? Usually when you record or stream, especially at these settings, it will say that your encoder gets all overloaded. It'll go to like, it'll shoot to 70%, uh, 80% even sometimes, and it'll get nuts. You do not want that because then it will result in a pixelated, laggy, terrible stream, okay? Or even a recording. So what you wanna do is go over to here, click on this, type in task manager. Once it pops up, click on it, and then you're here. You want to go to details, okay? So how this works, especially for newer and better CPUs, there's multiple levels of CPU. Mine has 12. When you have multiple programs running, they all share the amount of memory and all, the amount of speed and everything that your CPU has. So you want OBS to have as much of that as it can while everything else still runs smoothly. So say that you have a game open like uh, Fortnite, I guess. I think I have Fortnite, yeah. You want to go to there, right click on it, click on set affinity, and take away some of the CPUs. I take away four, maybe five, and make sure that OBS Studio has all of them. Because the more CPU OBS can use, the better it's going to run and the less strain it's going to have. Other than that, I've got nothing left for you guys. If you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions that you want to tell me, put them in the comment section down below and I will read all of them. Other than that, make sure to slap a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel. My name is JoeXT103 and I shall see you all in the future. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you for watching.